Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, let us take a look into at request mapping annotation. Well, at request mapping annotation is used to map web requests to a Spring controller methods. At request mapping annotation can be applied to a controller class as well as handler methods. So let us understand more about request mapping annotation with examples. So here are the examples that we are going to take a look into in this lecture. So we'll see how to use request mapping annotation at a class level. We'll see how to use request mapping annotation at a method level. We'll see how to use request mapping with multiple URIs. We'll see how to use request mapping with HTTP methods like get, post, put. Okay. Next, we'll see how to use request mapping annotation with producers and consumes attributes. All right. So let us go ahead and let us, you know, see all these examples. So let's go to IntelliJ IDEA and let me go to the project. Well, we have already seen how to use request mapping annotation with method. Next. Let us see how to use request mapping annotation at a class level. So here, let us go and let us annotate this book controller class with at request mapping annotation. And let us give the URI, for example, let us say slash API. So basically, whenever you want to define the base URI for all the REST APIs within the controller class, then you can go ahead and annotate a class with at request mapping annotation, and then you can define the base URI. So base URI meaning whenever you call these REST APIs, then you have to use this URI as a base URI. Okay. So just remember, whenever you want to define the base URI for all the REST APIs within the controller class, then you can go ahead and annotate that controller class with at request mapping annotation. And then you can specify the base URI. All right. So in real time project, basically we annotate a class with at request mapping annotation to define the base URI. Next, let us go ahead and let us run the Spring Boot application and let us see how we can use this base URI. So from here, I'm going to stop and rerun the Spring Boot application. Well, our Spring Boot application is up and running. Next, let's go to browser. And here we have the URL localhost 800 slash book. So this URL won't work now because we have used the base URI slash API, right? For example, if you go to code, here we have used the base URI slash API. So we have to use this slash API in the URL. For example, if you go to browser here, we have to use localhost 8080 slash API slash book. So this should work. And there we go. So this is how we use the base URI. Okay. Next, if you want to call the hello world REST API, that is localhost 8080 slash hello world, then this won't work because we have to add the base URI for this REST API. So here let us type slash api slash hello world so this should work okay so whenever you want to use the base uri or the common uri for all these rest apis within the controller class then you can go ahead and annotate that class with add request mapping annotation and then you can you know define the base uri like this okay perfect next let us see how to use add request mapping annotation with multiple uris so let's go back to our project and here let us go ahead and let us add multiple URLs to this REST API. So here we have a single URI that is slash book. Let us add one more URI. So in order to define the multiple URIs, we have to use a value attribute and then within a curly braces. Next, let us add the comma and let us define one more URI. Let us say core hyphen Java. Next, let us define one more URI slash, you know, Java. All right. Now we have defined multiple URIs using at request mapping annotation for this REST API. Next, let us go ahead and let us go stop and rerun the Spring Boot application and let us see how this REST API works. Well, our Spring Boot application is up and in. Next, let's go to browser and here let us call this get book REST API. So here we are using book URI first. Just refresh. This REST API is working as expected with this URI. Next, let us pass core hyphen java and hit enter and there we go this rest API is working for this core hyphen java uri as well next let us pass the java uri hit enter and there we go all right so this get book rest api is working for all these uris so this is how we can use multiple uris using at request mapping annotation for the rest api all right next let us see how to use request mapping annotation with HTTP method. Well, here, if you can see, we haven't specified any HTTP method for this request mapping annotation. Well, by default, 
if we don't specify the HTTP method for this request mapping annotation, then it will take the HTTP method as a get method. Well, at request mapping annotation has a method attribute. So we can use method attribute to specify the HTTP method. For example, here we can use a method attribute and then we can specify the HTTP method. For example, request method dot get. Well, if you don't specify the request method explicitly, then by default, this at request mapping annotation provides HTTP method as a get. Next, if you want to you know specify the HTTP method put then you can simply use request method dot put over here like this next if you want to specify the HTTP method post then you can simply use request method dot post next if you want to use HTTP method delete then you can simply use delete like this all right so this is the get book rest API so we have to use HTTP get method over here next if you want to have a create update and delete rest APIs then you can go ahead and use the respective HTTP methods like post put and delete so we'll see how we can use these you know different HTTP methods in our upcoming lectures so here just use HTTP get method next let us see how to use request mapping annotation with producers and consumes attributes so let's go back to our example over here and let us say this rest API want to produce a JSON and then return that JSON to the client. Then we can explicitly specify the JSON media type over here. For example, here let us use producers attribute and then media type dot application slash JSON. It means this producers attribute tells this REST API that produce the result in a JSON format. Next, we can also define multiple media types. For example, here we can specify the curly braces and then we can specify multiple media types. For example, here media type dot application slash XML. Well, let us say this REST API want to return the result in a different formats like this REST API want to return, you know, response in a JSON and XML format. Then we can specify like this all right next let us say how to use consumes attribute so let us say this rest api want to consume the json that is sent by the client then we can go ahead and use consumes and then media type application slash json next let us say this rest api want to consume the xml data that is sent by the client in a request then we can go ahead and use application slash xml and we can also you know specify multiple media types as well for example here within a curly braces we can specify multiple media types for example here media type dot application slash json like this all right so this is how we can use producers and consumes attribute to specify the media types and based on the media types the rest api will consume the data and produces the data all right so this is all about at request mapping annotation. Alright, great. I will see you in the next lecture.